Verily, it is worthy and fit and right and profitable that the people should tell the wisdom of the saints and that the congregation should speak of their praise. But yet it is more becoming that the subject of her praise should not be praised until after his death. Praise thou therefore the clearness of the day, but not until the evening hath cometh. The courage of the soldier, but not until he hath triumphed. The fortune of the sailor, but not until he hath landed. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt praise no man in this lifetime. Thus spoke St. Patrick. Patrick was born at Emptor, that is, that his rule relates to us. A child of 16 years he was, when he was taken into bondage. Sukat was his name, it is said. He was his father, it is thus told. He was son of Kelporn, son of Oditos, grandson of Diocen Odysseus. He was six years in slavery, human food he ate not. Quatheridge he was called, for a slave he served four families. Victor said to Milko slave, go thou over the sea. He placed his foot upon the stone, it traces, remains, it wears not away. He sent him across all the Alps, over the sea marvellous was his course, until he stayed with Germanus in the south, in southern Letha. In the islands of the Tyrrhenian sea he stayed, Therein he meditated. He read the canon with Germanus. It is this that history relates. To Ireland he was brought back in the visions by the angels of God. Often was he in vision, solicited to return hither again. Salvation to Ireland was the coming of Patrick to Fokla. Afar was heard the sound of the call of the use of Cael Fokla. They prayed that the saint would come, that he would return from Letha to convert the people of Erin from error to life. The Thua of Erin were prophesying that a new kingdom of faith would come, that it would last forevermore, the land of terror would be waste and silent. The druids of Legar concealed not from him the coming of Patrick. Their prophecy was verified as to the kingdom of which they spoke. Patrick walked in piety till his death. He was powerful in the extirpation of sin. He raised his hands in blessing upon the tribes of men. Hymns in the Apocalypse and the Trice Fifty he was wont to sing. He preached, baptized and praised. From the praise of God he ceased not. The cold of the weather deterred him not from passing the night in palms. By heaven his kingdom was protected he preached by day on the hills. In Slon, in the territory of Banabertia, hunger or thirst possessed him not. Each night he sang a hundred psalms to adore the king of angels. He slept on a bare stone and a wet sack cloth around him, a bare rock for his pillow. He allowed not his body to be in warmth. He preached the gospel to all. He wrote great miracles in Etha, he healed the lame and the lepers. The dead he restored it to life. Patrick preached to Scotty. He endured great toil in Letha. With him will come to judgment. Everyone whom he brought to the life of faith. The sons of Ermer, the sons of Erdemann, all went to Sicil, to the boat of Satan. They were swallowed up in the deep abyss. Until the apostle came to them, he came despite the raging tempests. He preached for three score years, the cross of Christ to the tribes of Phenai. On the land of Erin there was darkness. The Thua adored the Siddhai. They believed not in the true deity of the true Trinity. In Armagh there is sovereignty. It is long since Amon passed away. A great church at Dunleglas. I wish not the Tara should be a desert. Patrick, when he was in sickness, desired to go to Armagh. An angel went to meet him on the road in the middle of the day. Patrick came southwards towards Victor. He it was that went to meet him. 
The bush in which Victor was, was in blaze from the flame the angel spoke. He said, The dignity shall be at our man. Return thanks to Christ. To heaven thou shalt come, thy prayer is granted thee. The hymn which thou dost chooses in life shall be corselet of all protection to all. Around thee, on the day of judgment, the men of Aaron will come for judgment. Tassak remained after him in Sabbath. Having given the communion to him, he said that Patrick would return. The word of Tassak was not false. He, St. Patrick, put an end to night. Light ceased not with him. To a year's end, there was radiance. It was a long day of peace. At the battle fought around Beth Haran against the Canadianites by the sun of noon. The sun stood still at Gabon, that is, that scripture tells us. The sun lasted with Joshua unto the death of the wicked. This indeed was befitting. It was more befitting that there should be radiance at the death of the saints. The clergy of Erdogan went from every part to watch around Patrick. The sound of harmony fell upon them, so that they slept enchanted on the way. Patrick's body from his soul was severed from pains. The angels of God on the first night kept choir around it unceasingly. When Patrick departed from life, he went to visit the other Patrick. Together they ascended to Jesus, son of Mary. Patrick, without arrogance or pride, great was the good which he proposed to himself. To be in the service of Mary's son, happy the hour, in which Patrick was born.